Let's make a pier and beam foundation. Now throughout this video, sometimes it will be black and white. These are optional, more realistic things you can do. You do not need to do them though. Here's a piece of bedrock. You could build directly onto it, or you could bury it for a more realistic approach. The tricky thing here is going to be making sure you dig down to that bedrock since it doesn't fill the container. So here we're defining the perimeter, eight by eight. Checking that it's square. Now we're going to cut our Sono tubes. We're going to make these out of toilet paper rolls. Notice how I'm rolling it down to 12 inches. Uh, any larger than that's just going to take more concrete. That's going to cost you a bit more money in the real world. Not necessary for the small shed. Okay, check to make sure any cut ends are square. Now we're digging down, this is optional realism. Make sure that you can see the bedrock because we don't want any dirt inside the Sona tube that's gonna contaminate our concrete. Here's an overview of what it looks like. We've buried it. We're gonna tamp down the soil around it. Just hold it in place. The easy option would be to add some hot glue to your Sona tube and glue that directly to the bedrock. That's gonna keep the concrete in. Let's take some rebar or remesh more accurately, and we're going to bend it around a dowel. You can use a marker. Notice how there's the pointy end. Just feed that through the grid. And now we're gonna bend it back on itself, and that's gonna hold it closed in a cylinder. To hold those in place, we're gonna use hot glue, but in real life, you might drill in and put that rebar right into the bedrock. Okay, we're gonna get our concrete mix, our yogurt container, and a popsicle stick to stir it. And we wanna slowly add water until it has the consistency of a milkshake. Remember that concrete is corrosive, don't drink it. Here I am using a paper clip to remove air pockets and scraping the top off. Now it is likely to settle, so you might actually want to leave it there for a few minutes and maybe add some more concrete if it does settle. Here we have some different types of brackets. This type over here, the black one that I'm holding, uh, you push that right into the concrete when it's wet. You could do a miniature version if you really wanted to. And the beam itself is gonna sit in that bracket. You can imagine that as continuing on. It's just a short section. Nice work. Okay, now we're gonna make our beams and we're gonna make them out of two two by 10 boards. Hot glue those together. You should end up with two beams. Creating our brackets, we're using this thin metal. You can easily bend it and also cut it with normal scissors. Let's center those brackets right in the middle of our piers. Now, more realistically, instead of gluing, we would use a bolt. Here's a large carriage bolt I'm just showing. And I've found a couple of very small ones that I'm using to attach. This is optional. Don't glue your beams yet because we wanna make sure that they are parallel to each other. I'm gonna show you a more realistic option than gluing. You can see I, I've lined the brackets up, so I'm tracing them just to mark their location. Now some brackets you can buy have holes already in the center and they are designed, there it is, they are designed to bolt right to the pier. So if you really wanted to, you could drill a hole into your pier, bolt it, add some glue. Of course, our final check is to make sure the beams are level. If they are not, you can shim them. We're just gonna use some paper. This is just card paper. I actually just used from the toilet paper roll. Okay, and let's glue that up.
And that is it with our Peer and Beam Foundation. Good work, everyone. I'm Mr. Barack, Tiny Materials, Big Skills. See you all next week where we tackle the floor.